Okay, let's get started. Okay, welcome everyone. This is the SIG instrumentation introduction. Um, we prepared a little something for everyone uh, to get kind of an overview of what the special interest group in instrumentation is all about. And hopefully you all are excited about contributing to, um, helping contribute as part of SIG instrumentation and we'll uh, try to give some shout outs and pointers to where you can do that um, well, uh, so that you can get started with that. Um, some um, overall things, hopefully everyone's already familiar with what special interest groups within Kubernetes are. Um, if not, um, I'll explain it real quick. So essentially, um, special interest groups within Kubernetes are just like actually formally defined uh, groups. Um, around like cloud providers or instrumentation or uh, API machinery. So like people who um, commonly work together basically formed groups within Kubernetes um, to more efficiently work together. And in instrumentation, as the name implies, is all about like observability and those kinds of things. But we'll um, dive into the formalities a little bit more. Uh, but like to start out with, um, Piotr and I are the special interest group leads for SIG instrumentation. Um, so yeah, I, I work at Red Hat, and maybe Piotr can say a few uh, things as well. All right, so I'm working at Google. Uh, I think we've been leading this group for two, three years so far. Yes. Yeah. So I think you've been you've been a lead ever since we founded a special like SIG instrumentation. Um, I was there when we founded it, but uh, Fabian was the uh, the lead back then, and then I took over uh, from him roughly a year and a half ago. Um, so yeah, that's um, kind of the organizational thing, and like every special interest group within within Kubernetes has a mission statement. So uh, right now, this is when you look at the uh, special interest group charter, basically every special interest group has a written down document of what their mission is and what um, work is in scope for them, what's out of scope for them, so that everybody can understand what each of these groups do. And our mission is uh, we define best practices for cluster ob observability through metrics and logging across all components within Kubernetes. And um, even, th even though when we say, when we tell you it's a, all of Kubernetes, that's kind of vague, right? Um, we roughly mean the Kubernetes Kubernetes um, project on GitHub. Um, but because a lot of these things are also ripped out into libraries and stuff like that, we happen to also influence other projects um, through that. Um, now, you probably are already wondering, well, we're see, we see metrics and logs on here, what about traces? We'll dive into that a little bit uh, later or touch on it. Um, and then there's also the deep dive tomorrow where you will hear some of this ongoing work. So I highly recommend you going to that um, tomorrow. Um, so yeah. Within our charter, we've defined uh, the work that is in scope for us is defining processes, interfaces, and frameworks uh, for all of Kubernetes to adhere to. So for example, uh, one of the very first things that we did as um, SIG instrumentation is we wrote down best practices um, about the metrics instrument, instrumentation and things like that uh, so that when someone uses metrics exposed by Kubernetes, they actually have a comprehensive um, and an, a consistent experience. Um, and while there are um, a number of violations to those best practices today, we're trying to tackle that, and I'll um, dive into that initiative in a bit. Um, but overall, the idea is that we want Kubernetes to have really high quality metrics, and that's why we need these, those kinds of guidelines and frameworks. Um, and more generally, SIG instrumentation is a super cross SIG uh, kind of special interest group. API machinery, for example, obviously has a very, very defined um, space that they work in, right? Whereas instrumentation is like spread out through the entire code base. So if you're looking to get, to really touch every single component within Kubernetes, SIG instrumentation is a great place to be. Um, it can be scary, but um, folks are generally nice in, in Kubernetes, so uh, I highly recommend it. Um, yeah, and so other than that, one other thing that we, that we define is that we own all of the components that must run in a Kubernetes cluster um, for observability purposes. Um, and while there's really only one component that we'll touch on later, 
um, yeah, that we do we do on this component. And uh, kind of as a as a mirror to what what's in scope out of, out of scope is really. Um, we don't want to own any of the processing. We, we don't want to dictate which monitoring system you have to use. Um, obviously, we expose metrics in Prometheus format, for example, um, but that format is actually compatible with a bunch of uh, monitoring so solutions out there. So we don't, we don't say you have to use Prometheus. You can use any other system that um, can ingest the Prometheus format, for example. Same with logs, same with anything else that we would expose. Um, and specifically, uh, kind of going along those lines, we don't own anything specific to any cloud providers. All of those things belong in the SIGs specific to each of those cloud providers. So there's a special interest group for, um, for Google Cloud, for example. There's one for Azure. There's one for AWS. So if there's anything that is very specific to instrumentation or monitoring or anything um, on a specific cloud provider, then that belongs in that special interest group. Um, and kind of our, um, in the same way as we don't dictate which system you have to use for metrics or for monitoring, we also do the same with logs. And basically the only interface that we have for logging systems is we have a very defined space on disk where we're gonna write logs. And that's uh, something that you can rely on being there. Um, but beyond that, that's really, um, it's really up to you to choose which logging provider or whatever you want to use, and that's totally up to you. Um, so one of the concrete components, um, this is an add-on component, um, so you don't necessarily have to run this, but this is one other component that we, uh, for example, own. This is Kube State Metrics. Essentially what Kube State Metrics does is it watches the Kubernetes API and it generates metrics off of all of those objects. So uh, one very common example is what I have on, on the slides here. Uh, I think it, the, the benefit of this is kind of obvious. We expose metrics about the expected amount of replicas about, of a deployment and the actual amount of replicas. And so if there's a mismatch, for example, you can alert on that kind of state. And basically everything that can be somehow <coughs> squeezed into a form that looks like a metric, we do in Kube State Metrics. So basically, every API object that you've ever seen probably has metrics in Kube State Metrics um, to do useful alerting with. Um, Kube State Metrics has um, existed for a really long time. I think it was actually, it, it was probably one of the very first things I've, uh, that I ever contributed to within Kubernetes. Um, so I think this is a really cool project to get involved um, because there's almost certainly some metric that we're missing, and if you have a, a, a use for it, if you want to graph it, if you want to alert on it, um, we're super happy to accept those kinds of metrics. And so, um, yeah, but over the, over the years, we have also accumulated a couple of um, mistakes that we've made, um, some uh, technical depth, and so that's why we're also planning uh, version two of KubeState metrics. KubeState metrics, I think we called it uh, 1.0 roughly two years ago, maybe two and a half years even. Um, so yeah, we're, this is also a really cool way to get involved. Um, there is actually an umbrella issue where we track all the work that we want um, to do to, to move forward to, to our next major version of this. Um, yeah, so that's a really cool way to get involved as well. Um, one other thing that we, we defined, and this was also roughly around the time when we founded SIG instrumentation is uh, the metrics pipelines. And these are kind of general concepts and then the individual implementations as well. Um, so this is sometimes referred to as the core metrics pipeline or the resource metrics pipeline. Um, and this is really just about CPU and memory. And the, if you do kubectl top, for example, that's exactly um, what we defined here. And we, had, we defined in the general API for this, um, as well as um, a concrete implementation. Um, and so generally speaking, this is just an API definition and any monitoring system could implement this. Um, and we'll talk about some of these examples later. Um, but a very concrete one that this special interest group um, owns is the metric server. And it's, really a, it's, re it's a really simple component. Um, basically what it does is it fans out to all the nodes in your cluster, um, hits a speci specific API on the kubelet, 
um, and then keeps only the very latest samples for each container in your infrastructure in memory. And whenever you do kubectl top, it returns exactly those uh, that you've requested. So there's nothing too crazy going on here. Um, and that, that's, that was intentionally scoped in a very narrow, narrow case to cover like very basic auto-scaling purposes, for example, um, and that we could have a standard implementation that everybody could run, everybody could rely on, um, but have this generalized API so that if you already have, happen to have a monitoring system that is collecting all of this data, that would be doing duplicate work, right? So um, it's totally possible to, for example, and I'll dive into this in a second, um, have the, the monitoring system that you're already using provide this data. Um, and so this is, this is not a component of this interest, special interest group yet, although pretty much everyone in the special interest group has probably touched this at this point, or at least um, somehow influenced it. Um, this is, this is the, uh, the Prometheus adapter for the metrics APIs. Um, and essentially, this is exactly what I was just saying. There's already, you may already be running Prometheus um, and it may already be collecting all of these metrics from your containers. And so it may be um, unnecessary to run a second component um, that does the sa exact same work. So Prometheus could be used to serve the custom other uh, resource metrics API. But really why this adapter exists is more for custom metrics so that you can auto scale um, your applications based on custom metrics, let's say queue size or uh, request latency or stuff like that. Um, and obviously custom metrics have, are custom to their nature, so we can never have a, a defined set of metrics for that like we can for resource metrics, right? Um, so these are really specific to your monitoring system and that's why there's nothing out of the box that we could define here, but we, what we did define is the API for this. So again, very, very similar scheme essentially. Um, any monitoring system out there can implement these and I think pretty much every major monitoring system out there does provide a, uh, an adapter for this. Prometheus does, Stackdriver does, um, Azure does, I believe Datadog does. Pretty much, pretty much every monitoring product out there that um, is somehow involved with Kubernetes has an adapter for this. Um, and so the custom metrics API is always related to some Kubernetes object. So you say, for example, in your horizontal pod autoscaler, you um, reference some deployment, for example. And so um, the custom metrics are always referencing some object, whereas there's also the external metrics API. And that really doesn't have to be, it's very similar if you, in a, in a philosophical sense to the custom metrics API, but it doesn't have to be related at all to any, to any, any object. And the, really the only reason that we have a distinction between these two is because we can have much more fine-grained RBAC on custom metrics because if you have, let's say, access to metric, we can define access to metrics to of a specific object as opposed to everything within a namespace. And that's essentially what the external metrics API is. Um, so yeah, custom metrics, fine-grained RBAC, external metrics essentially own the most fine-grained RBAC that you can do is namespaced. So that's essentially things that we've done in the past. Um, so let's have a quick look at a couple of things that are upcoming, that are still in progress, where we're maybe still in design phase um, or uh, like halfway into it. Um, okay, uh, so um, uh, the work that is being in progress, that is in progress right now, is uh, uh, metrics overhaul effort. The motivation behind this effort was that we don't have any way of versioning metrics in, the, in, in Kubernetes. So when there is a metric and you want to change it in non-backward compatible way, or remove it, or uh, there is no way to do this safely. Like you can either, um, you know, change this and break 
people who rely on these metrics, like no matter whether like they're the developers, administrators, like cloud providers, uh, or you can keep these metrics forever, even that this metrics is, is broken. And there was an idea uh, to to change the state. Uh, this idea came from uh, Han. Uh, so Han is sitting there, and Han is going to talk uh, in more details about this tomorrow. Uh, so this is an effort that was um, introduced at the beginning of this year, like you know, extensively discussed, and now we are in the implementation phase. Um, as a part of this metric, we want to migrate control plane metrics to the framework that is proposed for versioning, which means <coughs> the metrics that are uh, existing now will will be changeable in the future. We'll do this once, so which means like you know, uh, mm, and and then uh, and then we'll have like a proper versioning mechanism. Okay. Uh, so uh, I don't know whether it makes sense to talk in more details now because this will be covered by Han tomorrow. Uh, so, uh, but like I think one more uh, thing that's worth to mention is that uh, we'll have a automated check in the Kubernetes repository. We actually have one uh, that is uh, validating the changes on the metrics and will detect if something is done in no, non non proper way. And uh, the other efforts that are in flight and they are on the uh, earlier stage. So we are working on the uh, like long-term roadmap, like two years roadmap, let's say, starting from now. Uh, yesterday during Contributor Summit, we have a discussion on this. Here is a link to a document that captures more or less this discussion. And uh, once we have an agreement of this roadmap, it will be like very clear what this thing will be working for the next two years. Uh, and uh, as a part of this roadmap, we have a few ideas uh, to do. Uh, one is like we own a few APIs so far, they are in beta, and uh, you know, uh, it's, it's not a good state when the APIs are in beta forever. We want to, you know, graduate them to stable or decide that maybe they're like wrong and then change them. But it doesn't make sense to keep APIs in beta forever. Uh, in, in, in a, like as a part of this effort, we also want to um, release version V1 of metric server. Metric server is something that a like, component that uh, Frederick was talking uh, earlier about. And this uh, component is the default implementation for uh, metrics API. And it is exposing research user metrics for Kubernetes system, uh, for Kubernetes pods and, and, and nodes. And, uh, you know, this is also in kind of uh, half-baked state. We want to, we want to uh, make this stable. There are also two other fairly large efforts, like which is like introducing structured logging and uh, uh, introducing tracing for Kubernetes objects. So those are efforts that are uh, in the discussion phase. There is some proposal uh, of a cap. This is still under review. Mm, yeah. So um, how you can get involved? Like there's plenty of uh, people asking how you can be involved. So it depends on uh, first your preferences, what you like to do, do you like to, you know, maybe more planning conceptual work or maybe you want to be more involved in the design of things, or maybe you just want to sit down and code. Um, the other thing is like, of course, like your experience, like depending on your experience, depending on your expertise, like you can be more efficient in some of uh, those aspects than the others. Yes, uh, so we've been talking about like plenty of efforts and like we have efforts in um, that like in, in, in every potential, like we have efforts in various stages, which means like, you know, the metrics uh, overhaul effort is in execution. So if you like coding, like this is like a good effort to get involved because like, you know, 
the, the design is there, we know what to do, we just need to, you know, um, invest more time into the coding, yes? The, um, like, a structured logging efforts, the tracing effort is like, you know, in the discussion phase, in the design phase, so if you want to get involved, if you want to review, this is like a good effort for you. Uh, if you, for example, like, planning, more like, you know, forward looking, like defining strategy, uh, come join us in to, to this effort of defining the roadmap, okay? Uh, how to reach us? So, we have a meeting uh, every, ter every other Thursday at, uh, this is like at 5.30 p.m. UTC, uh, which is, uh, what, which is, 8.30 PST, so local time here. For me, it's 6.30, so like, you know, we are spawned across multiple zones, uh, uh, multiple time zones. Here are the meeting notes. We have a channel of Slack, we have, of course, uh, 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 Google groups, uh, discussion group for, 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 for the discussions. We have appropriate groups on the uh, GitHub, so you can like CC groups, yeah. Uh, as I mentioned, tomorrow there is a deep dive from Han and from uh, David Dashpol. They will talk about this metric overhaul. They will talk about tracing. Um, come and join if you want to learn in more details. And that's it. Any questions? Yeah, maybe you can. Would, would you let the uh, external components use your logging framework, like log2, uh, like if I have a pod run? Uh, do you mean this structure, are you asking about the structured logging effort? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, those efforts are about introducing some frameworks to Kubernetes uh, code base, and then like having Kubernetes system components using those frameworks so that like, you know, we'll have this in Kubernetes, but I don't see any reasons why that everything is in the open source, everything is open, yes, it's under a good license, Apache one, and, you know, I don't see any reasons why not reuse this by, uh, you know, other systems, other projects. However, like, this is not the main purpose of this work, yes? So, potentially, those things might not be suitable for the other projects, and this is fine, at least for us. Yeah. So, um, like the the metric stability framework that that we've built um, is also part of like component base of Kubernetes. And like I know other projects outside of Kubernetes that are that use component base. Um, some specifically for the metrics framework um, because they think the the aspects that it brings are interesting. Um, so I think that's totally a possibility um, if that's what you want to do. Is any other project relying on this metrics framework? Do you know? So, I mean, within, within Red Hat, a bunch of projects do, but that's because they're okay. very closely related to Kubernetes. Um, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I haven't noticed. Any other questions? Yeah, here. Uh, maybe this is like too low level or whatever, but um, I think I've used the controller runtime stuff and I remember there being some, like a, a package somewhere that had global state with all the, with like the uh, Prometheus registry and stuff in it. Is that, uh, is that what they do everywhere or is there any yeah, reference so to get rid of global state? I, Han and I had a bunch of discussions about the global met metrics registry um, as we started the uh, metrics stability framework effort. Um, because essentially we knew that if we start this effort, we're going to have to touch every metric anyways. Um, and so we had a bunch of discussions and I think we, we did end up agreeing that we would like to get rid of the global metrics registry because it has, brings really weird um, aspects to it where suddenly for, for some reason you have API server metrics in the controller manager or stuff like that, which is really odd. Or maybe even worse, you have etcd metrics in the controller manager. Um, and so that, that causes really confusing, um, yeah, causes, causes a lot of confusion. So I personally um, 
very much agree that I would like to get rid of this um, global metrics registry. We're not at a point where we can actually do that. Um, but I think as we continue to iterate on the um, metric stability framework, we, we will hopefully one day get rid of the global metrics registries um, so that we can get rid of these weird subtleties that the, that the global state brings with it. For now, to only in, uh, introduce the stability um, aspect of the metrics, we, have, we didn't do that just yet, um, but that's do totally something that I'm interested in doing. Um, because like I'm feeling the pain in my downstream dependencies as well. Oh, it's okay. Yes, over there. Uh, you mentioned earlier, well, uh, metric standards, uh, logging standards, and you mentioned tracing a little bit. Are there plans to include any sort of tracing standards in? So uh, I highly recommend going to the deep dive tomorrow because um, there will be, uh, a, basically half of, the, half of the talk will be about tracing. Um, it's still very much in an, in an early state, um, but there's some really interesting work being done in this space. So yes, we totally want tracing. Um, it's difficult to inter introduce into Kubernetes because it's not a typical RPC style system. Right? We have like reconciliation loops and stuff like that, and that's not the typical like res request response flow that like tracing was nominally made for. Um, but we're, to we're absolutely interested in this, and there is work being done, and I think, yeah, just definitely uh, go to this talk because um, obviously it's an, an entire talk um, topic, so anything that I would say is not enough detail and probably too vague anyways, and I don't do this work, so I'm not the right person to answer. So to add my two cents to your question, like if you are thinking about those two free things like, you know, metrics framework, like logging framework, tracing framework, like, you know, the order is actually this, starting from the easiest, because like, you know, this, this even like metrics framework was like very hard, yes? And like the cap for, uh, logging for structured logging has like 20 pages, so it's it's not easy as well. Yes, so tracing is the most complex here, and you know we started from what was easier, like to gain experience. Easier, not easy. Yes. That said, the value that we can get out of those things is really impressive, and like I've only seen a couple of demos that were like from a year ago. I hear they've gotten even cooler. Um, so. Yeah, I'm extremely excited about this work. Any other questions? Okay, if not, then hopefully see all of you at the second presentation meeting. Thank you. Thank you.